On this warm summer morning, a small team of biologists begin searching the waters of the Chesapeake. We're doing about uh, 25 to 30 square miles of them is what we're surveying in here. They're looking for an elusive but frequent visitor to the bay, the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. We've identified over 800 dolphins, and that's just a fraction of the animals that are probably in here. Dolphins, about 200 meters away. Okay, got it. Can you tell which way they were going? They're going this way, down river. Janet Mann, professor of biology and psychology at Georgetown University, along with two of her graduate students, work the waters of the lower Potomac River. Just one or more than one? I've just seen one. Mann is a world-renowned expert on bottlenose dolphin behavior. And since 2015... Uh, oh, there's a little one. The dolphins of the Chesapeake have become her primary focus. Oh, yeah. There's the little one. It's like a, it does look like a yoy. Young of the year. Over the past several years, more and more people have reported seeing dolphins in the Chesapeake. The question that researchers like Mann want to answer is, why? Mann's goal is to identify individuals, document their behavior, and map their locations. Finding answers about an animal that spends most of its life underwater is no easy task. Dolphins are fascinating animals for a number of reasons, but they're always on the move. There's no dens, there's nothing that they build, there's nothing that we can collect to figure out what their lifestyle is like. So the only way we can really monitor them is through their dorsal fins, which is how we identify them, and, and that enables us to track them over the years. Most of the dorsal fins are really distinctive, either by shape or notches and other markings on them. So if we get a good enough shot, then <laughs> we can always match up. And one of the dolphins they've mistakenly identified as a male has a surprising new addition. So the last time we saw this animal was in 2015. Oh, really? Before this year, yes. Yeah. We hadn't seen it in 2016 or 2017, and now we're seeing it. Um, we've seen it a couple times in 2018, but we didn't see it with the calf. We didn't know that it was a mother at all. We did name it Hamilton, and now we know Hamilton's a female. So we changed the name now. I think it's going to be Elizabeth Hamilton, his wife. And if you're wondering why they named it Alexander Hamilton, the proximity to the nation's capital might give you a clue. Well, because this is the Potomac, we decided to name all the dolphins after important historical figures and particularly political figures. It's really fun to name the dolphins this way because we don't do it with respect to which party they're swimming with, so we can have Richard Nixon hanging out with Hillary Clinton and everything's just fine. There we go. Now the bottlenose dolphin is a warm-blooded, air-breathing mammal. These acrobatic and intelligent animals can grow 12 feet long and reach speeds of 20 miles per hour. They arrive around April and are gone by late October. And in the last few decades, their numbers have increased. This is a pretty dolphin-rich area. Historically, dolphin sightings have been recorded in the bay as far back as the 1800s. But by the mid-20th century, as the Chesapeake's health declined, they all but vanished. Up, over here. Now it appears the Chesapeake Bay has become a favorite spot on the summer migration route for thousands of dolphins, an event that's captured the attention of scientists and dolphin lovers alike. But we see the same animals coming back year after year, so that suggests they really like this area. What's drawing them back to the Chesapeake? Some speculate it's warmer waters caused by climate change. But scientists are beginning to think that a higher grade on the Bay's annual report card is more likely. So our, our most recent report card is, is a C, Bay-wide, and the Bay as a whole is trending positive. Bill Dennison, VP of Science Application at the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science, or UMSEAS for short, 
grades the Chesapeake Bay on its health and well-being. A lot of times the answer about how the bay's doing is really about how the Potomac River is doing versus the James River versus the Eastern Shore Rivers. So we're, we're looking at it in that kind of detail to be able to better understand where the problems are, where they come from, and what we can do to solve them. For the first time, we've got the entire bay going the right direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The, the dissolved oxygen percentage is 59.1. That's not so bad. Once a week, Weston Road Riverkeeper Jeff Holland and his team monitor river water quality. For the most part, it has been improving, and we can see that from the resiliency of the waterways to rebound from heavy rain events. And Holland witnessed firsthand the attraction of a cleaner bay. So one of my co-workers was coming in to the mouth of the river here on his boat, and he was telling me about his day's work. And uh, all of a sudden he said, wait, you got to come down here. There's dolphins everywhere. And I just happened to be near this boat. So I jumped in, brought some folks from the Smithsonian along with me. And standing at this very spot, we were totally surrounded by dolphins. Holland captured his experience on video. They're huge. This whole square mile was Dolphins everywhere, doing their pinwheeling, diving, rising and diving. And some of them had calves along with them. I mean, this was just the most astonishing thing that I have ever seen in my life. And what that tells me is that these incredible animals are giving us some kind of an endorsement. They think that the water is fishable and swimmable. And so I look at that as a real endorsement. A robust habitat means more species of fish for the dolphins to feed on. OK, good, we've got it. And the sounds they make when they're nearby are of particular interest to UMSI's professor, Helen Bailey. Okay, okay. Dolphins are really chatty animals. Unlike us, they don't use sight as their primary sense, but they use sound. And that travels really well underwater. So this device has a microphone in the end here, so we can listen to the sounds underwater. Bailey records those sounds to determine if dolphins have been in the area. And they actually use echolocation, that's where they're producing a click and listening to that echo to know how far away that object is, how big it is, what shape. So they're producing these echolocation clicks all the time. So here, this is what clicks look like on the spectrogram. So we're just seeing the lower part of the dolphin clicks. These clicks heard here can also reveal certain behaviors like feeding. Dolphin clicks. A faster click yeah. means they're honing in on prey. So we know not just that they were there, but what were they doing? Were they hunting at the time they were here? Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Bailey's research also includes an app that asks the public to submit their sightings. OK. The Chesapeake Dolphin Watch app is encouraging members of the public to participate because dolphins are so iconic, they're easily identifiable. Gary, right off the bow oh of our boat. Gary, it come up show. here. Our first dolphin Yay! sighting in the Chester River. And we're calling these members of the public citizen scientists. And it really is that they're contributing to the research. The Chesapeake Dolphin Watch app has given Bailey's team a wealth of information that would have been nearly impossible to gather on their own. We're getting information on where the dolphins were. And from that, we're already seeing the seasonal pattern of movement, which is really exciting to know that it isn't random. Most likely, they are searching for food, but they're going to places that they know and probably have been to before to see if there's food there. Two of those citizen scientists, Mike and Dawn Jones, have been boating on the bay most of their lives. Now, when they go out, they hope to further dolphin research. So I'm going to just change it to the last seven days. They saw in the last seven days, they saw a lot over in the Patuxent. Oh. See? We started using the Chesapeake Dolphin Watch app last year when it went live, and 
and I check it every day so I can see exactly where they are. So then the next day when I check it, that gives me a general idea of where they're going. The checking becomes more frequent the closer we get to the weekends. You can see the mark. Right on the Maryland-Virginia line. Yeah. So how far away are we from that? A mile or two. OK. It's nice we'll just have to keep our eyes open. And dolphins have been spotted in almost every corner of the bay. From Norfolk, Virginia to well north of the Bay Bridge and into tributaries like the Miles, Chester, and Magathy Rivers. They seem to be everywhere except where Mike and Dawn are today. Hey, Dawn. Yeah? What do you think? It's 5 o'clock. It's uh, like 22 miles back to Solomon's. Yeah, maybe okay. we'll have better luck tomorrow. And tomorrow is another day. OK. All right. It's definitely a big group. For Professor Mann and her students, the day I'm just got interesting. OK, waypoint four is to start. OK. Mann's team has spotted a pod of approximately 50 dolphins. I mean, they're pretty tight for unless they're really working a school of fish here. Oh, there's a baby. There's one mom baby, yeah. so just make a note there's a mom baby. Um, so they're going in two directions right now. 4960 looks like. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's seven, a large eight, pod nine, that's ten, here to feed. Seven. 12, 13. They're joining back with the other subgroup. There's more dolphins all the way going back that way, too. More coming in. This is where it gets crazy. Oh, oh, wow, oh, wow, wow! What? Oh, fish jump. This is cool. I've never seen them catch this many fish here. Yeah, this is really awesome. Uh, in the summer months, and we we do get a fair number of groups like this, but we didn't know there were this many dolphins in the Potomac until we started doing the research. We're excited that we saw so much foraging and we saw so many uh, fish catches there, and having dolphins in the rivers, a good sign. They wouldn't be here if there wasn't plenty to eat. And there can't be plenty to eat unless the conditions are good for uh, the fish to do well, so. Man believes it's cleaner water that's drawn these dolphins in, because they're creatures of habit. The abundant resources that are now here because of a healthier Chesapeake Bay keep them coming back year after year. Hello. The result of a massive cleanup effort that's starting to show signs of working. Mom, baby, Is that the mom and baby 4765, that mom, little tiny 4763. One. We think one of the things they might be coming in here is it's a protected area maybe for the calves. Why are they coming here to have their calves? Why aren't they having them outside the bay or somewhere in the Atlantic? It might be that it's the shallow waters or a, a good area, a protected area. But with so many females and calves present... I'd say there are at least five mother-calf pairs. It suggests these waters are more than just prime feeding ground. <laughs> Those look like a, that looked like a mount attempt. Another one, belly up, and another mount right there. The Chesapeake could also be a prime breeding ground for the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. There's we think the cow. females are mating here, and then they're coming back with to have their calves. This extraordinary drone footage submitted to the Chesapeake Dolphin Watch Program appears to capture dolphins mating. But the other thing that we're really curious about is whether from different populations might be coming here. So this might be an important place where they can avoid too much inbreeding, whether there is mixing perhaps from different communities or different populations along the Atlantic coast. And that would tell us that this is a, a really important breeding area. And so this could serve as kind of the match.com for the Atlantic. It's always exciting to see that these animals are doing so well. Good for everybody. Go. Woo! Oh my <laughs> Late. God. <laughs> Stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app.